This is strange. This is strange. This is strange. Everywhere you turn, it's the same old sports talk, the same headlines, the same news, and the same boring information. This podcast is here to change all of that. We bring you hot sports takes, winning sports betting strategy and picks, reliable gaming industry news, and breaking interviews with some of the biggest names in sports business. My name is Ryan Noople, and welcome to the Noop Sports Show. Hey, welcome to the Noob Sports Podcast, episode number six. This is Ryan, along with my uh, co-host Rodney. Rodney, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing well. Looking forward to some more football as uh, it seems like it just keeps coming back. I love these Thursday games to get going to start your week a little bit early. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you to all of the listeners out there. We really appreciate you tuning into our podcast. Hopefully you listened to... Uh, couple nights ago when Rodney and Tom uh, took care of college football for you and, and gave some analysis. Uh, now you're back at it with some NFL tonight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I I love football. I love talking about these games. Hopefully get a few right, but uh, trying to get a Trying to get a good grasp on them. I think we're ready for the fo- National Football League this week. I, I got a pretty good grasp on them. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, we're here to uh, be a resource and, and maybe give you guys a, a few tidbits or, or bits of information to help you with your betting and to help you with your daily fantasy. We're not here to say, hey, here's all of our picks. You should take them all. You know, we're not uh, we're not advising you to take all of our picks. We're trying to help you uh, get all the information you can to make your best uh, bet and your best pick uh, using all the information so that's what we're here for you know we do give our picks because it's fun but uh, you know a little disclaimer um, don't be coming back at us if we miss a few picks here or there because it happens it's a it's a it's a long haul it's not a a short <laughs> when you're betting it's not like a a short thing it's a long haul I think they would call it grinding is what we want to call it keep grinding away just keep grinding away. Yeah, it's a it's a marathon. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. So anyway, we appreciate you tuning in. Um, I will put the uh, the link to the college football podcast out in the show notes. Uh, if you go out to Noop Sports, that's k n u p sports dot com. You can find that uh, show notes for every podcast we have out there. So, all right, let's get it started. We're not going to go through every game. Uh, of week four we're not going to go through every one today we are going to talk a couple games give a couple picks each and then we'll give our quick picks at the end so uh, we'll get things started off well first of all uh, we got a couple little pieces of information that you need to keep in mind for this week one green bay and philadelphia both on buys this week so we have two teams on buys make sure you don't uh I don't think you'll even be able to get them in your daily fantasy, but make sure you get them out of your season-long fantasy leagues because anybody that plays on those teams will not be playing this week. And then secondly, we do have an early game. We have a 9.30 Eastern time early game. We have Indy and Jacksonville playing over in London, correct? Yeah, they're in London. They're at uh, 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern time. So I wake up to some football. Uh, absolutely. That that excites me. But uh, before we get to Sunday, let's talk a little. Uh, I know you have a pick for Thursday, Rod. So I'm going to let you have the stage on this Thursday night game. Yeah, Thursday night features the Dolphins at the Bengals. The uh, Bengals are 7.5 point favorites. 44 and a half is the total and I, I 51% only 51% like the Bengals I like the Bengals quite a bit in this game at home I think they finally get their run game going a little bit you know Jeremy Hill Giovanni Bernard and then get the passing game going once again then get back to the run and I think they're going to run over Miami I, I'm not I haven't been super impressed with Miami their splits aren't real good two and five in their last seven against the spread on the road I think I like I think I like Cincinnati quite a bit in this game. I'll take the uh, Bengals and, and think they're going to win by double digits. Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to get into that. We're going to give our quick picks at the end. I'm going to move on to Carolina, Atlanta. So we got a game. It's at one o'clock Eastern time. It's an early afternoon game. Um, you know, Atlanta coming off a huge, a huge win at New Orleans. Uh, I was very shocked at the way uh, Atlanta played uh, over New Orleans at New Orleans on Monday night football. But they're on short rest now, uh, short rest, coming home against a Carolina team that quite honestly really needs a win, and they need to get back on the winning track. I'm going to be betting on Carolina. Uh, I like this one a fair amount on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be taking them. They're minus three. I'm hoping to get them at minus two and a half. I think they're more like minus three and a half now. But if I can get them at minus three, I'll be happy with that. Uh, I may even take them the money line and just go ahead and pick them to just win the game straight up no matter what the score is. But I think they're going to play well at Atlanta in the Dome. I know Cam Newton may be a little banged up with, I think, the ankle, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. 
Um, Carolina seemed to have their number over the years. I mean, uh, last year I think Atlanta got them, but uh, you know, Carolina, if you look over the last three, four years, has really had Atlanta's number, and and they're going to be playing with a chip on their shoulder. They need a win desperately. Um, I mean, I'm not a big do factor guy, but I think if you're looking at that, Atlanta's due to maybe come back to earth a little bit here. Uh, I don't think they're as good as they're playing right now, to be honest with you. So I'm taking Carolina uh, minus the three points uh, early on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you there. I mean, Carolina is still the de- still the defending NFC champion, and you know a lot of those players back. I, I think they're going to get on to get going too. Big divisional game, and I, I don't see Carolina falling two games back of Atlanta. I'll, I'll take Carolina as well. No, yeah, me as well. So, if, and if you also look at that, the last six matchups in this uh, in this matchup, the last six games in this matchup have went under. Um, I don't know what that's to say. The over under is up to 50 and a half. So people think there's going to be some scoring here and maybe one of those games that there isn't quite as much. And some of the defense come out to play. Um, we'll see what happens, but, uh, let's move on. You have another, uh, Sunday game to talk about, Ron. Yeah, we could go with the, uh, bad against bad, the lions and the bears, Chicago bears are really, really, really bad. They have, uh, as of Wednesday, they had like 75% of their starting roster missing practice, and that's not going to help much for a bad team. The uh, Bears are at home in this game, Detroit at Chicago. Bears are a uh, two-and-a-half-point underdog right now. I don't see how the Bears will compete within two-and-a-half. I know Detroit struggled a little bit, but Matthew Stafford showed signs of life second half of that game against the Packers. I think the uh, I, th- I think the Lions score a bunch of points here, and I look for the Lions to win this game by double figures. I like the Lions a lot in this game in Chicago. Okay, I'm going to move on to Sunday night. So I know there's a lot more Sunday games, and again, we're going to give our quick picks at the end, so we'll talk for a minute about each one of them at the end. But I want to talk a little bit more in depth about this Sunday night football game. So we got Kansas City at Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh has Le'Veon Bell back. They should be close to near uh, full strength. I know they got a few receivers that may be out as well, but they did not look well, real well at all against Philadelphia last week. I mean, Philadelphia seems to have their number for some reason. Um, Roethlisberger and Brown, you know, are, are still connecting, but they're not hooking up in the end zone. Uh, I, Pittsburgh's minus five at home. I really like them to cover that over a Kansas City team that, you know, they're they're solid, but I think uh, they've shown some vulnerability as well. Um, the home team in this matchup typically does really well. Uh, Pittsburgh plays really well at home as well. Uh, you know, I like Pittsburgh to win by double digits in this game. I think getting Bell back is going to really make their offense a little more dynamic. Now they can run, you know, uh, Bell and Williams or Williams coming in as a backup on those second shift uh, opportunities. And then that just opens up everything, uh, all the passing game that Roethlisberger needs. So I really like Pittsburgh minus the five in this game um, uh, to win on Sunday night football. Yeah, those are two two pretty good teams. I mean, two teams that went to the playoffs last year. But I'll agree with you. Yeah, I think Pittsburgh wins this game fairly easily. I just don't see Kansas City keeping up with them offensively. I know the Chiefs' defense has been pretty good, and they are pretty good. But uh, you're right, a, a kind of a ticked off Pittsburgh team in this one. That uh, maybe you know, and Mike Tomlin's already come out and said he's going to give the ball to uh, Le'Veon Bell a bunch in this one. So, yeah, I think I think Pittsburgh wins this game. And then when they open up the run, now you got a guy by the name of Antonio Brown that will uh, destroy the Chiefs' defense as well. I like the Steelers a lot in this one as well. Yeah, I mean, were you really shocked at that game last week uh, at Philly? Yeah, I was because, you know, I, I wasn't sold on Carson Wentz. You know, I, we started the, these podcasts, and, and I mentioned these teams that don't have great quarterbacks, and those are all the best teams in the NFL right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was. It, it, I could not believe that Pittsburgh simply couldn't get on the scoreboard. I, I really didn't think Philadelphia's defense was that good. And, you know, end up just being they just kind of, I don't know, Pittsburgh just kind of quit in the second half. So, yeah, I mean, I, I look for Mike Tomlin to get the Steelers back on track. And, and uh, yes, I was very surprised last week. Yeah, me as well. There was a couple of games that were very surprising to me. So we won't dwell on the past. We'll move on. <laughs> but, uh Okay, so let's move on to a a little different segment. I want to talk about, uh, before we get to Monday Night Football and all of our picks, um, I want to give you who is the public pounding this week. So we have three games that 70% of the nation are on, the public is is 70% or higher on. We got the Lions. The Lions are the top public team this week. 80% kind of matches your pick there, Rod. 80% on the the Lions minus 2.5 at the the Bears. Does that concern you that 
that amount of the public likes the Lions? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's surprising. I mean, in Vegas, those things for a reason, you know, and there's a reason this line's at two and a half. You know, that looks so juicy. Two and a half. Two and a half for a Bears team is just awful. But yeah, yeah, eighty percent. That concerns me a little bit. But I, I'll just stick with who I think is the better team here, and and I'm pretty confident the Detroit Lions are the better team. Yeah. So then the second one we have is Denver is seventy five percent public, seventy five percent on Denver minus three at Tampa. So people in the show no love to Tampa. I mean, Denver looked really good on the road last week. They they kind of surprised me with their big win last week. Um, I don't know, Tampa. I mean, we'll talk about our picks here in a second, but that's uh, that's another one that the public seems to love Denver um, on the road. Yeah, I mean, I saw Tampa Bay, and they couldn't defend the, the Los Angeles Rams last week. And, you know, that's got to be a little bit concerning, you know, with Denver coming in, uh, probably a, a definitely a better offense than the Rams. So, yeah, I, you know, that one looks good as well. Uh, that could be that could be just a tricky one. I don't I don't know. I don't have as good a feel about that one as I do Detroit Chicago. But uh, Detroit any or, oh, excuse me Denver minus three anywhere is a pretty good bet because they're pretty good. Yeah, they are. Their defense is solid. So, uh, and then the third, who is the public pounding team this week is Dallas. Dallas, the seventy three percent of the nation is on Dallas minus two and a half at the lowly San Francisco Niners. Uh, so another one of those that just kind of stands out. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Like, oh, they're only minus two and a half at San Francisco. Um, but we saw what San Francisco can do, you know, week one when they uh, pretty much put the hammer down on on the Rams um, at home. So I don't know. I mean, that's another one. That's the, Those are the three that are kind of 70% or higher the public likes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you got to like Dallas a little bit here. I mean, Dak Prescott shown that he can take care of the ball. Ezekiel, like one of the better backs in the league now, and San Francisco hasn't shown any signs of life since week one. So, uh, yeah, I, I, in those three games, I'll rank the Lions, the uh, Cowboys, and the, the Broncos as far as my confidence factor in that order. Okay. All right, so speaking of confidence, let's move into our quick picks. We're going to go through every game. We're going to give a pick each, and I'm actually going to track these. These will be out in the show notes, so we'll go out to the show notes. You guys can see our picks. We can see what we did last week. I wish we would have done this since week one, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give our picks, and we're going to see uh, how we do from here on out, Rod. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, good. Hopefully we won't be 0-13 or something crazy. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. get it. No kid, it's the the Dan Lebetard show. They're they're documented as uh, haven't won one yet against the spread. That that's hard to do. That's not very good. <laughs> no, that's hard to do. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. We got uh, Miami plus seven and a half at Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati for me. All right, I'm taking Miami plus the seven and a half on Thursday night. Um, let's go Indianapolis minus two and a half. At Jacksonville. <laughs> well, that's that's in the one in London. That's so, early. Yeah, that's true. That's a neutral neutral site. Man, I think this could be a week Jacksonville bust out, but I'll take the Colts minus two and a half. I like it at two and a half better than three, so I'll take the Colts. All right, I'm taking Jacksonville minus uh, plus the two and a half. All right, we got uh, so far we're here are two for two opposites. All right, we got Carolina minus three at Atlanta. Got to take Carolina here. I'm with you. I have Carolina as well. Uh, Oakland plus three and a half at Baltimore. You know what? I'll take the oh man. I, I think the I'll take the Raiders on the road. I don't usually like these cross country trips between West Coast and East Coast, but uh, somehow I think Oakland's going to come away with the win. I'll take Oakland and uh, plus three and a half. I like that half. I'm plus three and a half. I'll take Oakland. Yeah, I'm with you. I struggled with this one when I looked at it because, you know, Baltimore, I think, three and 3-0, and they're at home. Um, I, I'm not sold on Oakland, but just something about this game feels like it's going to be close. It feels like it's going to be one of those last-minute games. So I like getting the three-and-a-half in this. So I'll take uh, Oakland as well. Uh, Detroit minus two-and-a-half at Chicago. Oh, I'll take Detroit. Yeah, I'm going to go against the public. I'm going to take the Bears. I'm going to take the Bears to finally play decent. Uh, I did like the way Hoyer played a little better than Cutler. I think he's going to take care of the ball better at least. Um, this game, I mean, it's it's Chicago-Detroit. It's huge. It's it, it's always a rivalry game. Um, I'm going to take the Bears. I don't know why. That's stupid. I mean, we can, quote, we can quote me later on as that's stupid, but uh, I'm taking the Bears. They're terrible. Yeah, I will Trust me, I won't be betting on that game, but I, <laughs> I, I can't take. I can't go with 80% of the public. I'm just going against the grain on that one. Sounds good. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, so Tennessee plus four and a half at Houston. Well, Houston took a big uh, a big shot with J.J. Watt being out, but I don't think it'll matter in this one. I like Houston minus four and a half. All right, I got Tennessee plus the four and a half. I'm taking the points on this one. Uh, Buffalo at New England. Uh, do you have a line on this game? I uh, everything <laughs> I'm seeing is off, so I'm uh, at this point don't know quite what the line's going to be. Yeah, the total is off too. It's weird to me. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I know New England doesn't know who they're starting at quarterback. Is it Brissett? Is it Garoppolo? Is it Edelman? You know, they've all they've all practiced. It's not going to be Tom Brady this week, but no, there's no line there. I mean, I'm guessing that's um, why. That's why there's no line yeah. is the quarterback controversy. So, I mean, my guess would be New England's going to be favored by four ish, um, three yeah, three think, and a half four. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah, my guess. Yeah, maybe closer to five, five and a half. But, yeah, I, 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 I still think New England wins this game by a touchdown. So, anything under seven, and I'm taking them. Yep, I have the Patriots as well. All right, we got Seattle minus two and a half at the Jets. Mm, that's a tough one for Seattle. That's a tough one to go on the road to the East Coast. You know what? I'm going to take the Jets in this one. I'm going to take the Jets' uh, money line. I think the Jets will beat the Seahawks. I'm with you. I have the Jets. I think they're going to beat them as well. They didn't play well last week, but their defense is, is solid, and I think they're going to shut down Seattle uh, this week. So I like the Jets. Uh, Cleveland plus seven and a half at Washington. That half gives me a little bit of hope. Cleveland's terrible. Cleveland and the Bears are terrible. Uh, but I'll take the Browns to cover this game. Terrell Pryor showed me a little bit last week. I'll take uh, Cleveland plus seven and a half. Browns surprised me last week. They can't do it again. Washington is going to bust out offensively at some point. I'm taking Washington. I think, I mean, Jordan Reed's got to score soon, right? <laughs> I'm taking him every week in DFS, by the way, until he scores three touchdowns because he's going to score three some week. So, yeah, well, he'll you be in may, all my lineups until he does. Oh, well, you may lose 16 weeks in a row then. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. But uh, I'm taking Washington in that one. All right, we got Denver minus three at Tampa. Well, I. I... You know, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm taking Denver. I mean, they're the better team, but on the road in Tampa is difficult. I, I'll, I'll take Denver. Yeah, I'm going with your cross-country theory, going all the way to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's getting three at home. I'm going to take them to look better than they did last week and win or at least, you know, lose by three or more. So I'll take Tampa in this one. Okay. Uh, L.A. plus eight at Arizona. I'll take the Rams to cover that as well. Arizona hasn't done anything, really. You know, they came out and busted out in week two, but looked awful in week three. On the other side, the Rams have played well the last two games. I'll take the Rams and the points. Yeah, I like that amount of points for uh, <laughs> for the Rams, who I think are one of the best defensive teams in the league. So I'm, I'm going to take the plus eight there. Uh, New Orleans plus three and a half at San Diego. Man, I, New Orleans just frustrates me. They can't guard anybody out. I'll take San Diego at home. I, I don't like the three and a half. I wish it was two and a half, but I'll take San Diego at home. Yeah, San Diego, um, I, I'm with you. New Orleans really struggled last week. I mean, they can score, but they can't stop anybody. Uh, I don't like the San Diego so depleted, but they've looked good at home. Rivers, solid at home. I'm going to take them to, to cover that as well, and I think their defense will, will be enough to, to win that game. Yeah, the New Orleans be 0 and 4. That would not be a good start. Yeah, I think they're just I mean they weren't good last year. I mean, they're just uh, no. uh I think they're done. I think I mean, I like Drew Brees. I've always liked him, but I think uh they need to blow that thing up and and try something different. Maybe maybe draft some defense or some uh, <laughs> some linesmen. That would be a good start. <laughs> All right, we got uh Dallas minus two and a half at San Francisco. Dallas here for me. Yeah, it's another one I won't be betting, but I'm not going with the public, so I'm going to take San Francisco at home plus the points um, in my pick. And then we got Kansas City plus five at Pittsburgh on Sunday Night Football. I uh, yeah, I'll go with Pittsburgh as well in this one. I think yeah, like we talked about, I think they're due to to bust out a little bit. Kansas City doesn't score enough. I'll I'll take Pittsburgh like uh, twenty twenty seven seventeen something like that. I'll take Pittsburgh. Yep, I'm with you. Pittsburgh's my pick. And then Monday Night Football, and we can talk a little bit about this game if we'd like uh, before we give our picks. But we got the New York Giants plus four and a half at Minnesota Vikings. That's uh, two pretty good teams. Um, you know, the Vikings have really shown that they're here to compete this year. Uh, you know, they won the division last year, but they haven't shown any signs of slowing down uh, this year. So um, what do you think? Any uh, initial thoughts on this game? And, and are you excited? I'm excited for this one. I think it should be a fun game. 
Yeah, I would have liked to have seen the Giants win last week and this be two 3-0 and teams, but the uh, Giants kind of laid an egg there against Washington. Yeah, you know, Dell Beckham Jr. has been a little bit disappointing as far as touchdowns this season. I mean, he got a bunch of yards. He got some receptions last week. You know, Minnesota, like like you said, just they're the most surprising team to me, how they continue to, to win with their defense and taking care of the football. I mean, this is a team that – beat green bay at home i i think i think you gotta lean towards minnesota in this one four and a half three and a half whatever you get it at i think i think minnesota's got to be the pick here so i'll take the vikings uh you know maybe it'll be four by the time i get it but i'll, I'll take minnesota to win this game at home yeah i'm with you i like minnesota if you look at their last 10 games and look at the points they've given up oh, i mean this is dating back into last year uh they've given up 10 14 16 25 okay that's a little bit much 10, 11, 16, 10, 13, 17. They're not giving up 20 or more points at all. I mean, their defense is rock solid. They are just not giving up points. And that 25 was to the Rams, by the way, <laughs> last year. Yeah, so, exactly. uh, I mean, they're just they're just locking down teams. They're winning games uh, with that defense. I, I just think they're going to win this game. I think they're going to win it pretty easily. Uh, I don't. I can't bet against that defense at home. I just can't do it. Yeah, and, and the Giants really don't have much of a run game to speak of, and you're going to have to be able to run a little bit on Minnesota. You're going to have to mix it up. If you don't if you don't have a combination of run pass, you're in trouble against Minnesota. So I, I think the Giants will be in trouble with this one. I agree. <laughs> okay, there you go. We have our picks. We're going to put all of those out in the show notes, so head out to noobsports.com. On the right-hand side, we have links to all of our podcasts. You can find the college podcast. This NFL one will be out tonight or in the morning. And uh, we're excited to uh, to have some football here. Any last thoughts before we uh, shut this thing down? No, just make sure you get out and uh, listen to NCAA and the NFL podcast. And uh, we'll, of course, have picks. I'll try to get on some Facebook Live or some Periscopes. And we'll post all of our picks on Facebook. So, uh, like Ryan said at the beginning, just because we're posting them doesn't mean we're telling you you have to take them. It's what we liked through our research. And uh, if you want to talk more about our research, we'd love to talk to you. Just send us a message, and uh, we'll chat about what we know. Yeah, we love to chat. I've been chatting with quite a few of you guys, you know, and I do appreciate that when you guys send messages, send tweets, send emails, send uh, Facebooks. Um, you know, if you have any questions as well, you know, I've been around, me personally, and I know our whole team has been around this sports betting and DFS industry for decades. I mean, forever. I've been around DFS since it started. I've been in sports betting for decades. I pretty much know all the ins and outs of how things work. So if you have problems with a sports book or you have questions about how these things work, just contact me. I, I love talking about it. I love helping, um, you know, helping you get started or helping you get deposits in, just anything like that. I mean, I know there's all sorts of problems that can happen or questions you may have if you, as you go along and, and learn how to do this. But uh, we're here to help. That's what we want to do. It's kind of our passion. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate to ask or, or just chat about these games that you like. Yeah, it's a, that's what I, exactly what I'm thinking. Love to talk about it. Love to help you out as much as we can. Okay, everybody, that's all I have, and we will shut this thing down. Good luck in week four in your daily fantasy and in your sports betting. So, Rod, thanks for joining me, and uh, until next week, we'll see you guys all soon. Have a good one, Rod. All right, sounds good. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Noob Sports Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our iTunes channel today. Plus, visit us at noopsports.com for more picks, previews, strategy, and news. That's K-N-U-P sports.com.